Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So today I'm gonna to be talking you through how to reach your first 10,000 followers on Instagram as a small business. So if you are new here, hello. Um, just as a brief introduction, I have grown my business Instagram account to 77.3K and my personal account to 11.3k. I think it took my business account about three, four months, I wanna say, um, to get to 10k. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I kind of had like a step-by-step -step blueprint that I followed, which allowed me to get there quite swiftly. And that is what I'm gonna share with you today. So jumping straight into it, the first thing you need to do is to optimize your account. And when I say optimize your account, I mean make it findable for people. People need to be able to find it. Obviously you want your people to find you through your content, but you want people to just be able to find you anywhere. Um, so this means adding keywords to your bio, your name, all of your captions, all of your content, everything like that. I'm gonna try really hard to figure out how to like put pictures on the screen and stuff. Hopefully there's a picture here right now. Hopefully here you can see the keywords in my name, which is something like small business tips instead of my business name, because my business name is already in my username. So if you searched for the small business handbook, I would still come up because it's in my username. There's no need for me to repeat it in my name. It's best for me to use keywords like small business tips that people might search for in order to find me on Instagram. So if you search for the small business handbook, you would find me, but if you also search for small business tips, you would also find me. So it just increases your chances of getting found. So if you sell like candles, for example, you would want things like look through home fragrance or um, soy wax candles or things like that, that people are gonna search for to find you. And you must ensure that they are actually things that people are searching for, because if they're not, it's not gonna work. It doesn't matter if you have keywords there, if they are not keywords that people are actually searching for. But so at the same time, you need to ensure that they're not too broad and competitive because then you will kind of be drowned out by all the big companies. So you need to kind of have a dig around on Instagram, have a little search for what other people are using, get some ideas, and then put them in your name, which is the bold bit above your bio. You want them in your bio, and you, want, you also want to start using them in your captions. Step two of optimizing your account also comes down to your highlights, your highlights and the little circles above your feed. You shouldn't really just throw anything on your highlights. They should be kind of put in place for a purpose. I always like to say that they are like your CV. It's what people read about the first time when they come across your business. So it's like the first impression they get of you. So I always recommend having one for about us a second one for frequently asked questions. So that can include things like your prices if you want to put that in, or things like upcoming product launches, or it can include things like delivery times and things like that. And then I would have a third one for your products. Now, when I say one for your products, I don't mean just shove anything on there. I mean, have it set out so maybe you can go onto Canva and you can create one story post for each product. You can have a picture of it, you can have a description of it, and you can have a link to it on your Instagram story. Post them, save them onto that highlight, don't touch it again. So people can kind of flick through it like a catalogue. The one you want is customer reviews. So anytime somebody leaves you a review, whether that's on Instagram or you want to take a screenshot or maybe you want it to look all nice, so you can just type them up on Canva and make a little graphic, pop them there. And then the fifth one is kind of choose, or you can have both, but I would say either behind the scenes or customer photos. And then the third part that comes with optimizing your profile is your bio. So you need three things in your bio. The first thing is what you do. So what do you sell? Simple as that. Second line, you want a credibility statement or a unique selling point. If you don't have a credibility statement, you can use a unique selling point. Credibility statement is anything that makes you look more credible. So it could be something like 500 plus five star reviews, or it could be like featured in Vogue or whatever it is. But if you don't have one, then do your unique selling point. So that then your third line needs to be a call to action. So this is prompting people to click on the link below your buyer. So it could be like shop now or um, save 10% or something like that. So now that your profile is optimized, I will move on to step four, which is content. With the way the Instagram algorithm works, you need engagement in order for your post to get seen by more people. So you need to ensure that your current audience are engaging with your post, otherwise they're not gonna get pushed out to more people, which is a little bit confusing. This means you need to you need to monitor your analytics. So if you go onto your profile and click analytics, you can filter it down so you can see like your top saved, liked, commented on, 
type posts for the past however many days and you can make note of them and start looking at them and thinking why was this saved so much why did so many people comment on this and then you can repeat those same practices across all of your content and kind of expand outwards from that but if you are kind of starting your account from like zero or maybe even a hundred or you're kind of near the beginning stages you probably haven't found a type of content yet that your audience like because you are not sure so you need to experiment. There are different types of content. You have storytelling, promotional, educational, entertaining, relatable, inspirational. You have loads of different types of content and you need to kind of post a few of each to see what people respond best to. So you kind of need to play around with it for a while to get a gist for what people really want from you. Step five, when you have had a little experiment, you wanna go back through and you wanna analyze the hell out of it. You wanna look at what people commented on, what people said, what people shared, what people liked. Don't expect like miracles to happen overnight. If you have only a couple hundred followers, you're not gonna get millions of shares overnight. But with the audience you do have, you need to think about what they actually liked because they're the ones who are gonna help you get pushed out to more people until you get more followers essentially. Six, now you have analysed things, you want to pick a type of content that you want to be known for. I feel like this is so important and I don't feel like anybody really like says this. Accounts that are known for a certain type of content do so much better. It doesn't have to be related to your products as long as it's appealing to your target customer. For example, I am mostly known for giving business tips. I follow art accounts on Instagram who are known for like satisfying content where they like scrape and it goes all like smooth. If you want to be known for that, that certain type of content, I know businesses who are known for storytelling content. They, they share a lot of behind the scenes. Um, I know accounts that are known for inspirational content. So they just share quote after quote after quote after quote and that's all they really share. You want to become known for a certain type of content and you want to stay consistent in posting that type of content and that doesn't mean that you can't post anything else so that you keep those new followers in because if they've come to you for that type of content and thought oh i loved that quote that they posted and then you don't really post quotes ever again they're not going to want to stay following you because that's why they followed you in the first place so just as an example i follow an account on tiktok and um, i cannot remember the name of it but i will try and find it and post a screenshot here but she sells candles and she has she does this type of content repeatedly where it's her unmolding her candles. So she's like pulled the wax, she's let it set and then she unmolds it on camera, but they always snap and break and it's quite like humorous and entertaining to watch. That is what she's known for. That type of content is what people know her for. That's why I follow her. It's also worth remembering that Instagram is not the best place for converting people. It's great for awareness. So you don't really want to be in the mindset of I need to sell this, sell this, sell this because on Instagram it is quite difficult to sell. You kind of want to funnel people through a process. So whether you sell on your stories or whether you sell on an email list or if you sell on a blog or wherever else it is, Instagram is a great place for gaining awareness and you should kind of take advantage of that. Seven, I think we're on. Decide which, which format of content works best for you in gaining awareness, not necessarily sales. Sales best come from stories, as I previously mentioned. What is the best type of content for you? Reels are not the only way to gain followers. I do not post reels. Um, I used to post them a lot because it worked for me really, really well, but I lost my love for reels like months ago and I have still gained just as, just as many followers each day from posting feed posts. Instagram, I don't believe are opting for reels as much as they used to be. I feel like it's quite an even ground. So you kind of need to decide whether you can do your best content through reels or feed posts or carousels. You don't have to stick with it and only do that having a variation is often quite good but what is like the prominent format of content going to be on your account eight stay consistent and i know everybody says that but i genuinely believe it really really pays off i stayed super consistent in posting every single day in the beginning stages of my account not so much anymore but in the beginning stages i did because i always had the mentality of if I overthink this post, it could have done really well and I would never have known. But if I just post it, then I will know and I can analyse it later. I can look at it and think, why didn't this do very well? And avoid doing something like that again. Everything's kind of like a learning curve. At the end of the day, each post is just an opportunity to get out in front of new people, which is what you're kind of trying to do. Obviously, you don't want to just throw out a load of trash. It's better to post less with high quality but it's also better to post like a middle ground. You want like medium quality, medium quantity, you don't. Number nine, 
create a base of raving fans. So at this point, you have begun creating content, you know what people like, you are slowly starting to build up your following. And at this stage, you want to build like an army of raving fans. And you do this via your stories. Now, stories aren't going to gain you followers. But what they are going to do is they are going to build up trust between you and the people watching them, which is a smaller amount than your overall following. So the people watching your stories are people who engage with your content. Therefore, they are like they are the ones that are most like into what you do. So they are super, super important for not only your sales, but also for the growth of your account. Because if you have these like raving fans that you can kind of be more personal with on your stories and you can connect with them more and talk with them more, they are going to continue engaging with your content. And the more they engage with your content, the more it's gonna get pushed out to more people and the more followers you are gonna gain overall. So even though it can be tempting to constantly think about the new followers and think, how am I gonna to get to new people? It's always best to actually start by thinking about the followers you already have, because they are the ones that are gonna help you get to those new followers and finally number 10 this is a little bonus tip and this is something that i did throughout my kind of growth from zero to 10k and it really really helped now if you've heard of instagram giveaways you will know that there are like different opinions on them some people say they're good some people say they're bad the reason people say they are bad is because you often get people following you just for the sake of the giveaway and then after the giveaway is over and they didn't win they all unfollow you i've never found this to be true However, I have found a way around this and it works like a dream. Go onto your Instagram, post a giveaway, but change the rules. Don't ask people to share the giveaway post. Instead, ask them to share one of your reels or one of your posts. This way, that post is instantly gonna reach a million and one times more people because there's so many people sharing it. But also, when these posts are then put out in front of so many new audiences, you're only gonna get people following you who like that content that was shared rather than thinking, oh, that's a giveaway, I'm gonna follow them and then unfollow them later. They're thinking, I like the look of that content, I'll follow this person. And then they'll see you've got, a, you've got a giveaway on your feed and then they'll probably join in too. And that is my 10 steps to 10K on Instagram. I hope you found this helpful. Sorry if I talked so fast, that was a lot of information to get through in a few minutes. Um, and I will see you again very, very soon.